Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. And this time I'll call forward our first senior speaker, Regan Gottager. Hello, Wisco. Hello, Wisco. The mic's not on. Hello, Wisco. Okay. And hello, class of 2022. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Regan Gottiger. <laughs> and I'm honored to get to talk in chapel today. Seniors, we have spent roughly 5,040 hours in this school over the last four years. <laughs> Keep going. Now, that m number might be a little off because I haven't taken a math class in over a year, but I'm estimating here. Um, in the grand scheme of things, that isn't that much time, but I think over the last four years, we've changed so much in those 5,000 hours. We have seen fellow classmates come and go, we've been through a pandemic, we spent half a year sitting on our couches attending school, and we've all grown up a lot since being 14-year-old freshmen. And now we're here, sitting in our last ever high school chapel. I think over the last four years, we've taken, we've taken the time we spend in chapel for granted. I know I have at times. For some of us, this could be the last time we just get to sit down together and listen to God's word together with a group of our peers. And just listen to God's word. I don't think we realize how important chapel can be to us. It's a time for us to relax, forget about the problems we may be dealing with, and just be reminded of how much God loves us. Seniors, when we graduate, we won't have somebody reminding us every day of that. They say you don't realize how much you love something until you lose it, and I think that's what's going to happen. I know that I've realized as our last chapel is coming to an end, how much I'm going to miss the 20 minutes at the beginning of every day, getting to just sit and relax and listen to God's word. We've all grown up over the last four years a lot. Whether it be in how we act, how we look, or how we think, we've changed. And Wisco's helped us grow and change so much. When I was a freshman, I didn't think about my faith that much, but I knew what I believed and that was about where my thoughts ended. Now I can say with confidence and with joy, I can be so grateful for how much I'm reminded every day in this school of how much God loves me. Um, in any time of joy or trouble, God is the first person I go to with questions or with thanks. And seniors, I pray that the same is the tr true for you over the last four years. Now we graduate this week and we have to go on to our next big step. For some of us, it will be college or going right into a career, the military, or some of us may still be figuring it out. Wisco has gotten us this far, and we are incredibly blessed to have such a wonderful connection to God every single day in chapel and in classes. I have the utmost faith that no matter what happens to us after high school, we will be okay no matter what. And <laughs> we will be okay no matter what. But please don't ever stop going to God, whether it be in times of need or just when things are going good. Please don't forget to thank him. And as for the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen of Wisco, you still have time left here. You have so many more chapels and classes to go through, and please don't take them for granted. Don't take your, you don't know how much time they'll mean to you until they're gone. Be thankful for the reminder every day of God's love and show it in your own lives. It should never be difficult to show God's love, and I think Wisco is a great reminder of that. When it's, whether it be to your friends, teachers, or maybe someone you've never talked to before, please show kindness. It will always be better for you and then in the end. Lastly, to my fellow seniors, I thank God for every single time, for every person I've met in my senior class. You're some of the best people I've gotten to know and I'm incredibly grateful. I've seen so much of you grow over the last four years and I'm incredibly blessed to be part of our class. No matter what happens after graduation, because of where Wisco has gotten us and because I've gotten our lives, I have no doubt that we'll be all right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Regan. At Senior Chapel, we have a tradition of singing Christ Be My Leader, the message we want to 
send with our seniors as they leave, and we'll do that now. Senior class and the rest as well. We get questions asked of us all the time, and most of them really don't matter. They, we can answer them quickly, and they're without consequence. At grocery stores, we used to be asked whether you wanted paper or plastic. At fast food restaurants, we were asked if we want fries with that. And we answer without really thinking too much, and quite frankly, the answer doesn't matter. But then on the other end of the spectrum, there are questions that are extremely important. I call them essential questions or critical questions because they cut to the heart of a matter, and the way that we answer them really does matter. Many years ago, uh, <clears throat> my wife and I had a sick child, and we found ourselves in front of a doctor. And this was a good doctor. He did everything he was supposed to do. He gave us all kinds of information about the illness, and he laid out all the treatment options. And, you know, doctors have to do that, because if they don't tell you everything, and something bad happens and you were misinformed or didn't have the right information, well, that's malpractice. They can be sued. But mostly, a good doctor just wants his clients to have good information, and he did. But I found myself in front of him bewildered because there was so much information and there were so many options, and I'm not a doctor, and I really, quite frankly, didn't have any idea what to do. But it was right about then that my wife looked the doctor in the eye and she said to him, if this were your son, what would you do? That was a critical, essential question. And let me tell you, I will not forget the look on that doctor's face because it was relief. <clears throat> on the one hand, as a professional, he couldn't tell us what to do. He had to give us the options and let us decide. But as soon as he heard that critical question, as soon as he knew he was given permission to tell us what he would do, he did it immediately. And we followed his counsel. And God blessed it. Now, seniors, you're going to face critical questions, essential questions throughout life, and how you answer them will matter. But this morning, for the few minutes that I have in front of you, I'd like you to think about a time in the disciples of Jesus Christ's life where Jesus put to them a critical question. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So here's Jesus asking for some information. You know, this conversation makes me think a little bit about the one some of us have with who's the greatest basketball player ever? Uh, what's the greatest rock band ever? What's the greatest movie ever? We won't agree. We'll all have theories. We'll all have ideas. And the disciples said, you know, Jesus, people know you're something special, but they really can't agree on who you are. And then Jesus lands, he drops the essential question. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. 
Friends, Peter nailed it. He gave the right answer. He knew who this teacher was, the Messiah. This is the one who was predicted back in the Garden of Eden. This is the one who would crush the serpent's head. This is the one for whom God orchestrated all of history so that he could come from his chosen people. This is the baby on Christmas morning. Predicted, foretold, thousands and thousands of years before he came. And Peter now didn't have just an opinion. He had a strong belief that you are the Christ or the Messiah, same thing, the one anointed, the one predicted to come to save the world, and the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus makes sure that Peter understands it's what, this isn't the conclusion that he came to by himself. This had to be revealed to him. He couldn't make up his mind that Jesus was the Christ. The Holy Spirit put that faith in his hearts. And friends, for most of you, the Holy Spirit has put that faith in your hearts as well. You, by God's grace, can answer the way Peter did when you're asked, who do you say I am? But seniors in particular, and quite frankly, all of us, I'm still doing it myself at an advanced age, we're going to have to answer this question, who do you say I am, over and over again throughout life? In fact, I would invite you this morning to tune your ear to this question in so many different circumstances. Listen for Jesus asking you, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am when you face adversity? Seniors, would you read with me, please, these verses from Habakkuk? Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God my Savior. <coughs> These are Old Testament metaphors here, have a lot to do with crops. Well, what's the prophet talking about here? You will, and I'm no fortune teller, I can just tell you that you will face times of adversity. You already have. You're going to face those times when nothing seems to be going right, when resources seem scant, when you're wondering how a situation is going to resolve itself. That will happen. And I don't say that to be mean. I say it because it's reality, and you already know it. But look what God tells us. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. So in those times of adversity, listen for Jesus coming to you and saying, when you're down, but who do you say I am? And you, by God's grace, can answer, you're my Savior who has done everything necessary to earn my salvation. Pastor Hebner made it so clear yesterday, that won't change, even though the circumstances will. Let's go the other way. You know, believe it or not, I am looking at senior class, I'm looking at some future CEOs, I'm looking at some extremely successful people, who are going to earn a lot of money and enjoy the finer things of life. It will happen also. We know that because <laughs> there's 14,000 living graduates from Wisconsin Lutheran High School walking around the entire world, and some of them have been extremely blessed. But can we read this morning from the Lord? Would you read it with me, please? When I fed them, they were satisfied when they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. And so, Lord, we ask that you would remind our seniors of this. If you are blessed with prosperity, if you reach a point where you're on the top of the flow chart, if you have every creature comfort that money can buy, please cock your ear and listen to Jesus asking the critical question. And who do you say I am? And you will be able to answer, you're the son of the father of lights, 
from whom every good and perfect gift comes. You're the one who gave me the skill and the brains and the ingenuity to make a very good living. You made me prosperous, Lord. I thank you, I praise you. Let me give back to you. Who do you say that I am when you're overwhelmed by your sinfulness? I wish, friends, I wish I didn't have to say this, but it's just true. You're headed for some times when mistakes that you make are going to be really painful. In fact, you may lose a relationship or a job over the miscalculation you make, over the poor choice that you make. And after you start to assess that and wish you could have it all over again so you could correct your mistake, but you can't, you're going to feel very low. And it's right about that time the devil will sneak up behind you and whisper, this is the one that God can't forgive. Yeah, yeah, he can help you kick a bad habit. But this thing you did, no way. This is beyond God's love. And that's when I ask you to tune your ear to the essential question. Who do you say I am? Could we read this, please? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The Bible is filled with passages that assure you your sins are forgiven, every one of them, and that God's love endures forever. Finally, you are going to be challenged. I know this because I know where many of you are headed to different campuses. You're going to be challenged to believe that there's more than one way to salvation. In fact, we're anti what's called binary now. So many intellectually enlightened thinkers are making clear we understand that when you talk about Jesus being the only way to salvation, you're being extremely narrow-minded. How can it be just an either-or? Either it's Jesus or you're condemned. Come on. Intellectual, intellectually enlightened people don't think binarily like that. And you'll be challenged. I said, look, you need to respect all faiths. You need to understand that there are many ways to salvation depending on who the person is. Be respectful. Now, I'm not telling you not to be respectful of what other people believe, but when you're challenged to believe that there are many ways to salvation, cock your ear and listen to your Savior saying, and who do you say I am? Could we read this passage, please? This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. Friends, yes, you will hear about different paths to eternal glory, salvation, nirvana, whatever term somebody wants to use. But you've got to ask yourself, who or what, in what, is the confidence in those belief systems? There is no one like Jesus. If we're willing to follow a prophet like Muhammad, what about questions like, was he sinless? Would he be willing to die? For sinners? Could he conquer death and rise from the grave? The answer is no. And the answer is no to any other religious figure, any other prophet, any other spiritual icon that anybody can come up with. This is what separates Christianity from all other belief systems. And it's not only that. Only in Christianity will you find a Savior who has done everything to redeem you from your sins. You have nothing to contribute. It's all grace. And in every other system, you'll have to do something. You'll have to be good enough, or let's just say not so bad. But in Jesus Christ, you have a Savior who went to the cross to atone for every sin you will ever commit. And his Heavenly Father accepted that perfect sacrifice in your place. And now he's in heaven preparing a mansion for you. That you can count on, and you will not get that in any other 
belief system. So cock your ear and listen. When you're tempted or you're met with other alternatives, who do you say I am? Well, friends, we have been so grateful at this school to be able to share Jesus Christ with you while you've been here. And trust me when I tell you that our most earnest prayer is that nothing will separate you from your faith in Jesus Christ. Go to the cross again and again, and as you hear him ask you at every stage of life and in every circumstance, who do you say I am? Let this image be emblazoned on your memory. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who went to the cross to take my sins away. Amen. At this time, we do want to recognize our academic top ten. And what I um, would like to do at this point is simply ask each one to uh, stand when their names are called. They have... um, shared some information about themselves on the screen. I'll also share with you briefly the favorite memory of Wisco that they recorded as well. So first, Benji Durr, please stand. Here's Benji's memory, singing hymns in Pastor Butler's Living Christianity class. He had a hymn as the prayer for the day, and I asked if I could sing it. He said yes, and from that day on, he picked a hymn as the prayer for me to sing all the way until the end of the school year. Kwanji Sa, stand please. (laughs) Kwanji is a man of few words and has shared with us that his family... His favorite memories are all of the engineering stuff that I do. Xiao Wang. <laughs> Lao, also a man of few words. Favorite memory, studying in Honey Creek Hall in our dormitory with my peers. Grace Schneider. When I got an A on my econ test, it was the first time all year I got an A without corrections. Way to go, Grace. Grace Daly. (laughs) Memorable experience walking to WLC in the pouring rain for music theory. Grace, one of our students who took courses at WLC. Alexandra Chafin. Memorable, doing a 10-minute speech for speech class about codes. I had to practice many times and learned much about my topic. Jatan Sazaj. Another plug for speech class. I was so nervous giving my first speech as it was my first year at Wisco. I was new to the U.S., and I was very shy. It forced me to come out of my comfort zone. It got easier from there. Madison Visatko. Favorite memory, doing daily devotions in AP Calc BC. This class is normally busy and strenuous. Spending five minutes a day to study God's word will always stick with me. It gave everyone in the class an opportunity to just breathe. (laughs) Madison Seip. (laughs) Every day before we start class, Mr. Hernandez has us read a Bible passage or story in Spanish, and then he leads the class in prayer, which not only helps strengthen our Spanish skills, but also strengthened our relationship with God. And 
Ernest, Ernest did not quite make it into the top ten. <laughs> Ingrid Bushkoff. But you will hear from him. Favorite event at Wisco is PRISM because it is the one time every year when all the different musical ensembles as well as individual performers come together to present a series of concerts. Music is my forte and it's always really amazing to see the spotlight on the fine arts. Congratulations to our top 10. Now we ask Ernest Love to come forward as one of our... My journey here at Wisco hasn't been the easiest. There have been some tough times. Freshman year, I thought I was ready for high school and that it wouldn't be a challenge for me, but that wasn't true. I had a hard time balancing my work and my time. The work piled up on me. The work piled up. <laughs> hey. The work piled up on me a lot quicker than I expected. Once I fell behind, it was hard to catch back up. Time management is something that I learned while here at Wisco. I had to learn how to balance my time and my work outside and inside of school. Being at Wisco, there were things I didn't like. One being the dress code and some of the teachers. <laughs> I learned that in life, there are a lot of things you will not like, but you must get over it if you want to be successful. Before high school, I never experienced someone doubting me or my goals that I wanted to accomplish. Being here at Wisco taught me that there's always going to be someone who has an opinion, judges, or doubts you and your success. I learned that I am responsible for my own actions and success, and that I have enough potential to do whatever I set my mind to. I learned that, thing, I learned that things are always, aren't always going to be easy for me, but with God, I could persevere through anything. I feel that the theology classes that I, had, that I had to take have allowed me to become closer to God. It took me a while to make the decision to get baptized. The classes and what I learned in them and some encouragement from Pastor Hebner is what gave me the push that I needed. I'd encourage all the underclassmen to take responsibility for your actions because a lot of your success depends on you. It's better to start early and not late. And trust, and trust God always because there will be some tough times where you might question if you'll be able to persevere. But tough times are one of the ways you get closer to God. Thank you, Ernest. At this time, we would like to acknowledge five members of our faculty who will not be returning to service at Wisconsin Lutheran High School, either due to retirement or moving to a different position. I would ask, uh, if they're in the auditorium, these individuals to stand uh, one at a time. First, Mr. Michael Weekman. Mr. Michael Weekman has been with us for four years, and that's a relatively short time, but he has led our visual arts department in a mighty way and led it to great accomplishments, and many of you have benefited from his instruction and his mentorship. Mr. Michael Weekman, thank you for your service. Mr. James Hom. Mr. James Hom actually had two stints at Wisconsin Lutheran High School, his second one for the last uh, 13 years since 2009. Mr. Hom has led our trade and tech department, taught our engineering and metals classes, and has excelled at integrating God's word into a subject matter that somebody could easily say, 
doesn't have anything to do with God's word. But since he teaches from a point of faith, he's, he's found a way to make us honor God through all instruction. We thank Mr. James Hahn. Ms. Jen Hennen. Ms. Hennen has been with us for the last 20 years, uh, a graduate of Wisconsin Lutheran High School, and has taught in our math department. If you've been fortunate enough to be one of her students, you know that we don't have a better prepared teacher in the building, and that her heart is with students. She's always thinking about how to serve them. It comes through in her instruction. Thank you, Ms. Hennen. I can't follow that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Al Greshner has been serving Wisconsin Lutheran High School for 35 years. Um, <clears throat> I could say that he's a science teacher, but that would not give credit to everything that he's done for uh, the ministry at Wisconsin Lutheran High School, not just teaching in religion and science and small engines, and anything else that's been asked of him over the years. But coaching and fixing things behind the scene, Mr. Greshmer has been a blessing. And I don't need to tell those of you who are his students where his heart is. It's with you, Al Greshmer. <laughs> and our athletic director, Mr. Jeff Sitz. Almost the entire ministry of Mr. Sitz has been at Wisconsin Lutheran High School over 40 years. And uh, 30 or more of those have been as our athletic director. Um, we could talk a long time about how our athletic programs have evolved to a point where they are not just award-winning, but respected all over the state. And much of that is due to Mr. Sitz's leadership and, of course, the coaches who have worked under him. When you are blessed to have somebody be in the same place this long, you know that you have a special gift from God. Mr. Jeff Sitz. John Park, could we call you forward, please? school family and especially good morning to class of 22. Uh, my name is John Park and I still can't believe that this is going to be a last chapel for some of us and it's really an honor to be up here and share God's word together. For most of the time I stand here on the podium I represent as an international student. I share my words and thoughts as a perspective of an international student and someone who is from a different country and someone who normally doesn't belong here. But today, I'm happy that I'm representing as a member of class of 22. <laughs> Thank you. Um, future seems very uncertain. Um, for me, I still remember freshman year, I was thinking, when am I gonna graduate? There are still like three years to go. It felt so long, but now looking back, 
it felt so short at the same time. Some of us will go to college or army or get a job, whatever it is. It'll require growth. We would have to be more mature and responsible for our behaviors and thoughts. We would have to be more independent and adapt in a new environment. And for me, four years at Wisco had prepared me well, as I was able to try new things, have amazing experiences, and meet amazing people. I won't say that I enjoyed every moment here, as sometimes I wanted to go home. I struggled, suffered, I got into trouble, and all of a sudden, COVID happened, and we didn't get to have a normal school year for the last two years. And school is not always fun, to be honest. <laughs> and I want to tell you that it is okay to be afraid, nervous, and anxious. We will fail, we will get stuck, we will face more challenges as we are getting close to becoming an adult and one step closer to the actual society. And we never know what will happen in the future. But what we can do is enjoy each moment God gave us. Last two weeks, I've met new people and some I became friends with and some I just had a few words with. I laughed a lot. I really try to enjoy each day that God gave us. It's never too late to do something. And lastly, thank you, Wisco, for all the wonderful memories. I personally grew a lot as a Christian and as a person. It was an honor to meet you guys, and especially class of 22. It was such a fun time to have you guys as classmates, and I will never forget the last four years that I spent with you guys. Thank you. Another senior chapel tradition is to have our a cappella choir sing, I thank my God every time I remember you, or an expression of gratitude.
Thank you, a cappella choir. Beautiful. <clears throat> Would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we have so much to be grateful for. To count blessings would be impossible. But at the front of that list, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his saving work. We thank you for planting in our hearts the belief that he is the Savior of the world and that he has done everything necessary for our salvation. We pray now that throughout life, when the question comes from your Son, Jesus Christ, who do you say I am, that we will have the boldness and the confidence and the faith to answer, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray, dear Lord, that in any circumstance, that we will fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, to get us through every circumstance, every trial. And should you bless us with prosperity, Lord, let us turn our hearts to you in thanks and acknowledge where every good and perfect gift comes from. And I'll spread your loving and protecting hands over the senior class of 2022. We know that you will not forget them, that you know each one of them by name. May they stay close to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all.